Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and in this video we're going to continue to work on the MGB GT. So imagine that I have this seat belt on, you know, it's going to be very tough. I won't be able to reach. So I need to bring that forward. So I'm going to create an aluminum panel that will come forward. Now, probably because I'm a short guy, but that's what it is. The second thing is that I'm going to rerun this cable for this emergency shutoff all the way to the back on the side window. And for that one, uh, you'll see me running some special cables and I made already a special patch panel for that. But the other thing, and probably even more important, is the fire extinguisher. Now I have one here bolted down to the floor. Now this is a manual fire extinguisher. That means I need to unlock it. And then I can take it, you know, and then I can start uh, putting the fire out. Now that is not the intent uh, in a race car, of course. It is great if you have a small fire on the engine or anywhere else and you have plenty of time to get out and then you can do this. But can you imagine if you have an accident and your car catches fire? The last thing I'm going to do is trying to unlock this bottle and then start using it. I want to get out of the car. You know? So the main purpose of a fire suppression system in a race car is to allow the driver to get out of the car in time. And that is why a manual system like this really isn't all that efficient and I wouldn't rely on it to be very honest. Now I have driven with this before and often it's an economical decision but after all I think your life is worth more than just a bottle of um, um, agent. Um, now these bottles that I have here, uh, they only last X amount of time. They also need to have a certain volume. Now on this type of a car, which is a small car, four kilograms is more than enough. So in this video I'm going to install a fire suppression system, but not based on a manual system, but based on a semi manual system but using nozzles to spray around in the different areas in the cockpit. Um, let me just put this down for a second. So what we're going to do is uh, to run up uh, some cables from the bottle of the fire extinguisher all the way to the side of the car on the outside. So in case I have an accident uh, and the car catches fire and I am not able to ignite or um, activate the fire um, suppression system, then somebody can do it from the outside. But also I will have a second handle right here as well. Again, within reach that I can pull. So in case there is a fire, I can actually activate it myself. Now the whole idea about a fire system or fire suppression system in a race car is not to save the car. Uh, it's to save the driver, the pilot. So the thing is, um, if you get a crash, the fire starts, you just pull that lever and then either you will have gas or foam and I'll talk about this in a few minutes, the differences between the two and then uh, that will distribute through pipes and funnels that will be placed or jets for that matter that will be placed on the dashboard maybe over here somewhere on the high side where it, your head is on both sides maybe even in the back so it's going to spray down on your torso, but it also needs to spray down in the foot. Well, the last thing I want to have is my, my legs being burned. Uh, so I want to have a spray in the foot well, I want to have a spray on my torso, and I also want to have a spray in the back where the fuel tank is. And obviously in the engine bay, I want to have at least two jets that will spray in the engine bay where the uh, carburetor is and the fuel pump and the fuel filters, that's where you most likely will get the uh, fire, if any. So you will see me running all these pipes and now let me show you a few of those things and then we come right back and talk a little bit about the different types of agent that are in these bottles. I made two holes in the plexiglass where the levers will come through for both the emergency power shutoff but also for the fire suppression system. And I'm going to mount this, of course, on a metal panel that's going to go in the back and I already have it pre bent and made and painted black so it can go in nicely. So I'm going to now install this and afterwards we will go ahead and actually install the uh, levers uh, to activate the fire suppression and the power shut off. Now there's a reason I chose this location because my 
roll bar is right on the side here. You can actually see the bar and it's in a very strong point. So um, that should be quite all right. And I think it's better than on the bonnet where most people place it. I just hope that nobody is going to pull the wrong one uh, if they want to do a power shut off and they pull by mistake the uh, fire suppression. That would not be all that good. I added a firewall to the back of the car because underneath the car we have the gas tank. So now this is going to give me some extra protection as kind of a firewall. It has been sealed in and locked down and you can actually see the hose of the uh, filler nose uh, coming in on the side. So this is the filling hose which is going to the cap on the side here and this is a special hose actually for fuel but I also fitted it through the firewall here on an other uh, protective uh, flexible pipe so it has plenty of play inside so it is not going to rub through. So now it's time to lock down the panel to the uh, cage, uh, the panel that's going to hold the um, pull levers. Alright, that's number one. Alright, so this is kind of rock solid, it's not going to move. So these are the pull handles that I'll need to feed to the openings and then we put a nut in the back. Okay. So this is the first pull handle and this handle is going to be used to activate the fire suppression system. The second pull handle will be for the power brake. What I have here are three different fire suppression systems. The first one is a manual and you've seen that uh, when it was sitting in the car. Uh, this is something you need to pick up and then use it, unlock it with the safety pin and then spray with it. Typically you also have a meter on it, a little indicator that tells you how well the bottle is still charged. Um, the issue with this bottle is that, as I said, you will have to pick it up yourself and then use it and to be honest, the only purpose of a fire suppression system in a race car is to allow the pilot to get out of the car in time. You know, if you can buy 10 seconds when the car is on fire, that's a long time to stay in a fire. But if you can suppress the fire for 10 seconds or a little bit more, that gives you ample of time to get out of the car. So that is why we want to have a fire suppression system. So this one, well, it's good, but it really doesn't protect you very well, nor does it protect your car because you have no nozzles, you have nothing. It's just locally once you pick it up. So not really all that good. This little bottle here is actually built for an automatic system. Of course, you can also use it manual, but if you look closely enough, you will see the connections for a nozzle here. And there's two holes on the top. I don't know if you can see it. It's for the pull levers. Uh, it's still filled up properly. And the nozzle is actually sitting on this side. That's where the nozzle goes. Uh, it's also uh, been refilled. So you can always get refills on, uh, on these bottles. And this is the Nova Gas. And again, uh, this is valid for about three to four years. And this bottle right here is, well, this is a fairly big guy, as you can see. This is four kilograms. This is the one I'm going to put in the GT because that's the size of car uh, that requires four kilograms. There are regulations on this as well. And again, uh, that uh, media or agent is also um, subject to an approval and also it has an expiry uh, date. So that's true for all fire extinguishing systems. Now, this big red bottle here comes with a lot of tubing and this is the tubing by the way there's several reels of that when you have to run through your car and then you have all kinds of nozzles that come with it we got here t nozzles we've got 90 degree angle nozzles and there's a whole bunch of them as you can see uh, in terms of nozzles i think this kit came with about uh let's see one two three four five um, seven nozzles, which is really good, and a couple of T-connectors, right? So, so you can run all this stuff throughout your car. 
So having an automatic system uh, which is manual activated is really great uh, with nozzles because that will spray uh, the agent inside the engine bay and in the cockpit allowing you to get out of the car in time. Having said all that, there are two types of agent in these bottles regardless if it's a handheld bottle or a matte automatic or full automatic bottle. I didn't mention the full automatic uh, models, but that is instead of a lever, it's an electronic push button you could push to activate it. I'm not too keen on that. I like a mechanical lever more than good enough. Nevertheless, uh, as I said, the bottles contain an agent and there are two main types. This Novak gas, this is a Novak filled bottle. This is what I use in my monoseater race cars, uh, the open wheeled cars. Novak gas is quite different than what I have in those two bigger bottles here. The red bottle is an AFFF agent inside. Now AFFF stands for aqua uh, film formed foam. So when you spray with this, uh, it's going to create a foam. Now that's a bit messy of course to clean it up afterwards. It's not harmful, um, but it's messy. And the foam will actually take away uh, the oxygen on top of the fire. So it, it kind of creates a film on top of the fire surface so that the fire can't get any more uh, oxygen. So then it kind of stops. Now it's an illusion to think that a four kilogram bottle will actually last forever in your car to put all the fire out. It's not going to do this, of course, if you have a ruptured fuel tank. That is a lot of uh, fuel that comes out and that's a lot of flame. So it's, it's going to help to a large extent. It's going to give you time to get out of the car. But your car will most likely go up in flames anyway. And that's true for all these uh, bottles. Unless the fire is very well local, maybe in the engine bay, then you may actually save the car. But first priority is the driver or the pilot. Uh, this bottle, as I said, is filled with Novak. A Novak is a different type of uh, agent. It's actually a kind of a gas um, and when it comes out of the nozzles it kind of vaporizes and it's heavier than air so it's going to fall down almost like a, I should say, a, a cover uh, onto the flames and it's going to take the heat away from the, fire, from the fire and because it takes the heat away it's going to stop that fire. So this is really good stuff. Um, this is now the newer uh, product. Uh, AFFF is older and I think it will be banned in the near future because it has some substances in it uh, that are not all that good for the environment. Now, of course, we don't use this too often and let's hope we never have to use it. But okay, regulations are regulations, so don't be surprised uh, if this is no longer allowed at some moment in time. There's one more thing I wanted to tell you is that those two big ones are metal containers, so they are, yeah, they are pretty heavy. This one is an aluminum one, so it's very light. So again, you can also get AFFF uh, agents uh, for fire extinguisher systems um, in aluminum bottles. They are more expensive. Now, what does it cost? This is always the question, right? What does it cost? So a four kilogram automatic system with all the pipes and all the nozzles and it, com it comes with sufficient uh, pipes. Uh, I'm just showing you one, but there's more and all the handles that runs you around, let's say 600 euros. That's about the cost for that. I know it's a lot of money, but after all, it's uh, all about your life. It's about you surviving a fire, right? Uh, Novak uh, is a bit more expensive. That little bottle here runs you about 800 euros. Also, it comes with some nozzles, uh, less nozzles, of course, because this is for a, ra a smaller race car, an open wheel race car. But you could as well get a bigger bottle and fit it in a GT of some sort. And then the full manual um, uh, filled bottle with AFFF agent, while this runs you probably around 250 euros. So different prices, um, different methods, different solutions. I had this in my GT before and I've seen a couple of burned out cars and um, I spoke to a couple of people that nearly escaped and all of them said no more. We go for a nozzle based system, automatic or semi-automatic. And this is what I'm going to put in my GT. Um, I know I'm already old, but I don't want to burn to that. I need to move forward this panel as much as I can, at least up to this point here. And therefore, I'm going to use an aluminum panel that we will actually place underneath the dashboard. It will come down here to the tunnel. 
and then we'll lock it all down and then uh, we should be able to install the pull handle and the emergency power shutoff switch that we have right here. Uh, so I'm going to take some thick cardboard and we go in to trace it all out and then we should be uh, quite all right. So we're going to remove now the old panel and hopefully we can get it far enough forward. So here's my paper model or my template uh, which we're going to install like so and then we'll have the emergency breaker here and the pull handle on the other side and just maybe I can install my speedometer uh, right there at the bottom and this guy is going to be right here oh, that's a bit tight so I've looked at a couple of options to install this speedometer right here on the central console but that is a bit difficult uh, especially with the pull handles and the emergency shutoff I don't have enough space really so I decided to drill a hole right here on the passenger side uh, because I don't have a passenger in this car and now I can install this GPS uh, speedometer and this is very lightweight extremely lightweight and that at least will give me an indication on how fast I'm going so here's my template that we used inside the cockpit and now I'm just going to place it on here and we're just going to trace it and then cut it out so here's that First piece, and I think that looks good. All right. So this is the panel that we're going to put up. All right. So here's our panel that we just bend it, and let's see if we can fit this right. Normally that should just fit properly, and let's see. I think that is fitting quite nice so now I can actually drill the holes and put the handles up to cut a hole in the aluminium where the emergency shutoff switch will come through I'm going to use a hole saw and this is specifically for metal very handy to cut so all you need to do is to install it on this insert here and then stick it on your drill and then you can actually drill the hole through the panel that's it you're done I've painted the aluminum in matte black and I put some stickers up as well I uh, installed the pull handle and we locked it on the sides into place and now uh, this is as good as ready now I still have to do something I still have to run a cable on this emergency shutoff that's gonna pull this lever that way whenever there is an emergency for the power so now it's time to install the fire suppression system. So we need to install the bottle itself, all the tubing and the jets. So the place for the bottle really depends on your car. Now the bottle that I have here is quite heavy. It's about 4.5 kilograms. So I can use it to my advantage in balancing out the car because I'm the only driver in this car. There's no passenger seat or co-pilot seat so therefore I can easily use this bottle on the place where my co-driver normally would be so that way I can start balancing out the car but there's a couple of other issues that you need to keep in mind for instance where's the pull handle inside the car and where are the handles on the outside of the car so as you can see we have a lot of cables coming out here and these are all the cables coming from the handle from the inside of the car but also from the outside and of course there's an additional cable for the emergency shutoff which we need to run but that's something else but for the fire suppression system uh, we have to make sure that we can route these cables properly and they should not be in an S form because that isn't all that good to actually pull the cable so you always have to choose the location of the bottle so that it is a good match between weight distribution of the car and where the handles are 
uh, for the activation. So here's the bottle. So what I think I'm going to do is run it out this way. And the cables are now coming in from this side. So in essence, this big cable here uh, is going to come in like so. Uh, this is how this cable will come in. Now there's one more thing we need to put underneath, which is the anti-torpedo bar. And this is the anti-torpedo bar. This is the bar that goes underneath the supports that prevents the bottle from flying back and forward. That's where it's got the name from, uh, anti-torpedo. Okay, so let me drill the holes in these brackets here. I have the line to the anti-torpedo bar and I marked it. So now I'm going to put a couple of bolts in so we can hold it in place. together in a proper way. A little bit in the middle. So keep in mind if you're going to install a fire suppression model that you install it in a safe place, so on a strong point on the car. Now right now it's actually in the middle where the driver's seat normally is, so that is a pretty well protected area. I have the outer sill which is fairly strong and then I have the toner right here. Now this is now sitting very solidly into place and it's how it's supposed to be. Next time I have to remove it is in 2025. Um, something else about this bottle is that uh, you got to make sure that the label is readable upwards because otherwise if you're going through the inspection before the race uh, they may want to check the numbers and the accreditation and the product and if it's not readable, then you have to undo all this again and turn it over and then you're going to have a problem with your tubing that comes out. So keep that in mind. So now it's time to install the jets and I'm going to install in the cockpit four jets. And of course, it all depends on your car, but you have to run the tubing or it's best to run the tubing on in the strong places of the car. You don't want to run it on the outside because if it's bent and the tube won't work anymore. So I'm going to run it along the bottom sill and then come up along here on this uh, roll cage. And my first jet will be on the passenger side. This is this blue line pointing towards me, but downwards a little bit. I have another jet right there in the middle. And you know if you can see it, but that's the ribbon right here. This is this one, uh, that's one. That's going to be in the middle of the car and it's going to point backwards to where the fuel tank is. And on the other side, I'm going to have another jet pointing at my torso. And that's this one right here. So this is going to point on my torso. And then the last jet, number four, is over here. You might not see it, but this is going to spray inside the footwell because where my footwell is, this is where I have the carburetor and the fuel system. So. It all depends on your specific car where you should place those jets. Um, it differs from car to car. And in the engine bay, I will actually install three jets. So the next thing we're going to do is now to install the pipes. And these are aluminum pipes and you can easily roll those out and you can even bend them. Uh, but be careful not to bend them too sharp because you don't want to pinch really this pipe. Now, if you need to go in a short corner, then you can always use a pipe bender. And this is a pipe bender. They come in all kinds of sorts and types. And that will help you for a very short uh, corner or radius of a corner. Now, it's better to do it by hand and then, you know, give it sufficient uh, radius, as you can see right here. Uh, of course, this pipe has to be fixed uh, on a 
chassis or a very strong support area. You don't want to run these pipes in very sensitive areas whereby they would be crushed when you have an accident. So I'm going to run them at the inside of the sills and then along my uh, roll cage inside the uh, cockpit. And then I'm going to use these cushion clamps that go around the pipe. And here you see that cushion type. Uh, and this is really good stuff uh, to use. Let me give you a little bit of a close-up so you can see it. So here we have one of those cushion clamps. These are additional cushion clamps that I have. Those are 8 millimeter because the tube is an 8 millimeter tube. So I will place those wherever I have the nozzles really, making sure that this tube is fixed uh, fairly well towards the chassis or the uh, roll bar of the car. Now cutting the pipe, you typically would use a pipe cutter like this. This is a big one, but you can do it with a smaller one. If you do it, don't squeeze too hard on the roller because otherwise you're going to pinch again uh, the pipe and that's not the intent. And once you have cut it, you should actually take the edges off inside and for that one typically you have all kind of different tools on, on those uh, pipe cutters that actually will do this for you. If you're going to clean that up, then hold it downwards so whatever falls out, uh, comes off falls downwards and not inwards. Right? I'm just going to cut it now for you, very gently. I don't squeeze too hard because otherwise I will pinch the tube because aluminum is a fairly soft material. So, and I'm not forcing it. So here it's cut and now I need to clean out the edge. And for that I'm just going to use that little tool and hold it down a bit. So here I need a T-connector, so putting these connectors up is fairly easy. You just squeeze it in there and that's basically it. So it's now really locked into place and it won't come out anymore. You can still rotate it a bit because you want to set the jet in the right position, right? Here's the pipe that I just created and all I need to do now is insert it into the bottle and push it. And that's it. Now it's in place. And now I can just run this uh, tube to wherever it needs to go, right? Now, as you can see, I've taken a pretty wide radius to come out. So now I will actually bolt down uh, this cushion uh, bracket onto the uh, inner cell. So here you see how that pipe is connected to the fire suppression bottle, and then it runs along the outer cell where I have it attached with these cushion brackets and it entrance onwards away to the front pillar where I'm going to go up actually onto the roll bar to install the jets. So now I need to run a pipe all the way along my roll bar to the blue point here where I have my first jet and of course uh, I will have to straighten this up a little bit and I do this very gently and sometimes on a flat surface it's even easier to roll it down and let's see, all right, so you can see that works quite well. I'm going to measure that distance and now we cut it. I will need a bend here more or less. I'll need to cut it right here. So I'm going to cut it off and then we'll install that pipe. Here is the pipe that we have just cut and let's see how that's going to fit. I'm going to come out there. And I'm just going to run it along. So you really want to make some proper bends. And yes. This is a bit of uh, fiddling, guys, but... Um, all right, so let's see. I think we're getting there. So I'm going to insert it in the T-connection on the bottom. Uh, but that's still not right. You can hear the click when it's in. All right. So now I can properly form it to where it needs to be. All right. So here I'm going to install the jet and then I can spray towards the inside. This is how we're going to lock it down like so. The jets can rotate. So if you don't lock them in place, you might actually have a problem uh, because they will move around. And the jet points in the right direction. 
So here you see the jet now being locked into place together with the tube which is running alongside the roll cage. Now you probably wonder why I'm actually installing plastic tie wraps. Well this is just to hold that pipe a little bit more fixed towards the roll bar because I don't want that pipe to rattle because if things do rattle while you drive uh, you're gonna get wear and then it may actually rip through that pipe. So that is why I'm putting these tie wraps up. Now of course if you have a fire uh, these tie wraps will melt uh, and so that's why you need to have metal uh, fixing points uh, for your jets themselves. Uh, so even if these tie wraps are melting my jet will still be in place. You so all the cables are now in place, even the emergency cutoff, which I can now pull from the outside and then the switch should actually toggle. And also the cables for the pull handles for the fire suppression system are now installed. There is a safety pin right here that you need to remove before you start racing, otherwise uh, you can't pull the handles. So in the cockpit we got four jets installed, one on the right hand side, there's one right in the middle of the roof pointing down, there is one on the far end side where the driver sits normally, uh, which is going to point at the torso of the driver, which is this one right here, and there's a last jet which is sprayed inside the footwell of the pilot. And by this, uh, this system should be more than adequate and more than good enough to protect us in case of a fire. So folks, we've come to the end of this video and in the next episode we go into work on the engine bay. It needs a little bit of rearrangement and you'll see that very soon where we go into install an expansion tank on the cooling system. We go into install a spill tank for oil and cooling liquid but we also go into install the fire suppression system inside the engine bay and we go into work a bit on the uh, fuel system where we go into install a fuel pressure regulator and some gauges to make sure that the Weber is not getting too much fuel pressure from the electrical fuel pump. And when all that is done then we can move on to part number four which is actually changing all the fluids, the brake fluids and the cooling liquids and all that so that the car is finally ready by the hopefully the 17th of March to get on the track. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.